let's raise a glass, alcohol or not, to folk who are doing rather well when times have been hard. And I'm thinking immediately, of course, of three cheers for our unelected Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, who has seen his family fortune rocket over the last year. Sunak and his wife, uh, Akshata Murthy, saw their wealth increase by just £120 million at a time when millions of Brits have been struggling with the cost of living crisis that has been managed by Rishi Sunak. So Sunak and Murthy's wealth estimated today at £651 million in the Sunday Times Rich List, up from... £529 million in 2023. That non-DOM status clearly not harming them at all. Uh, Is this anything to celebrate, I wonder? Well, Phil White is a founding member of Patriotic Millionaires UK and joins me to discuss. Morning, Phil. Good morning. I don't I don't see a glass of anything in your hand toasting the success, the fantastic financial success of our Prime Minister. Uh, No, not actually. And uh, I think... I mean, they put the, to put this in context, we need to think about what the rich list is, frankly. And, and what the rich list is, is celebrating that a few individuals have managed to extract and accumulate enormous wealth from society. And that's that's what we're talking about here. And wealth is created by society and by interactions and so on. And actually, the fact that we have a prime minister who is on that rich list with, as you say, £650 million family wealth, I think is a real cause for concern for our democracy. Cool. See, because Lincoln said, you know, democracy is of the people, by the people and for the people. And when you have a billion, uh, sorry, not a billionaire, but somebody with that amount of wealth, £651 million, I don't think you can say that this is of the people. No. So, yes, it's, I think it's both economically an issue and also democratically an issue. D- does it say anything about hard work? Like, uh, there's, there's, there's sort of often... Pro- the notion trotted out by the Tories is that if you work hard, if you work harder, you will reap the benefits that hard work equates to increased wealth. And yet, as far as I can tell, um, this £120 million increase uh, in, in their fortunes hasn't actually derived from any work at all. It's, it's come from share dividends. Well, it, it, it has derived from work, but not, but not necessarily their work. work. It's derived from workers who are actually, you know, working in factories, working in business, working in services and so on. And that's where the wealth is generated. And then, you know, it, it accumulates up. And we, I think trickle down economics has been talked about a lot since Liz Truss. Um, this is trickle up economics where actually all the wealth that's generated from um, people actually doing a job. Um, goes upwards. And then we come to talk about taxation, you know, and actually, why aren't we taxing this wealth much more highly at the top? Why are we taxing people who are working for a living? And we have this emphasis on taxation of, of work, not of taxation of wealth. I'll leave that question hanging in the air, Phil, because it's one I wrestle with on a daily basis. It makes no sense to me because our system, therefore, seems to support the wealthy at the expense of the workers. But that's a little bit too Marxist, I think, for most of us at this time of the day. We're dialing in on the billionaires, uh, the Sunday Times Rich List, out this weekend. Both the King and the Prime Minister feature prominently on that list. Uh, And the conversation we're going to have over the course of the next hour is about how much money is too much money. Uh, And is there a tipping point at which we as a society say, you have enough. And now it's time to redistribute the rest. For the sake of argument, let's put the ceiling at 999 million. The more astute among you will notice that that figure is 1 million short of a billion. I I don't think anyone needs to be a billionaire. So... For a sense of scale, because I think it's important, and that's my question to you, by the way, should billionaires exist? 0345 6060 973. You can text 84850, tweet at LBC, or ask Alexa to send a comment to LBC. So for a sense of scale, how much is a billion? Because the fact it's only one letter different from a million is a, is a tricky, it's a bit of a sleight of hand, isn't it? Because it's an extra three zeros. So if you were to, uh, if you were to take a billion steps... Let's say the average stride is about two feet. It took a billion steps. The total of the Earth, sorry, it it totals about 380,000 miles, those billion steps. So you would get around the Earth 15 times. You'd walk around the Earth 15 times with a billion steps. A billion miles could get you from the Earth beyond Saturn. And if you spent one pound every second for an entire day, no, if you burned one pound, every second for an entire day you would burn 86,400 pounds if you've got a million you can do that approximately 
for two weeks with a billion pounds, you can do it for more than 31 years. 31 years, eight months and 12 days. Does anyone need a billion pounds? A billion hours ago? One billion hours ago. Stone Age. Are you getting it yet? It is a redonkulous sum of money. So this from the Times, previewing the uh, the Sunday Times list, uh, read it, reading the reporting from them here. The Sunday Times rich list features figures who have made their fortunes from stair lifts, shipping containers, supermarkets, petrol pumps and portaloos and includes a Catholic priest, the king, the prime minister and Britain's first billionaire musician. But some names are missing and more may soon be because this year's edition records the largest fall in the billionaire count in the guide's 36 year history from a peak of 177 in 2022 to 165 this year. It seems the tide is going out and the world's wealthy are starting to leave. Uh, the, 30, the 36th Sunday Times rich list of 350 individuals and families with a combined wealth of 795 billion is topped by Gopi Hinduja and his family for the third successive year in a row. The investor has an estimated record fortune of 37 billion. 37 billion uh, Hinduja was one of the first billionaires to make London his home in 1979. The boom came in the first two decades of this century, stoked by rock-bottom interest rates and its frothy stock market, which was the number one place for global entrepreneurs to float businesses. The world's super-rich flocked to these shores, drawn by everything from London mansions and country estates to city wealth managers, top independent schools, football clubs and a world-leading social, cultural and sporting calendar. Added to that, Westminster politicians of all stripes made a conscious effort to roll out the red carpet to the world's most minted. Uh, in the year 2000, the rich list identified 26 UK billionaire, billionaires, and that number had doubled to 53 by 2010. By 2019, before the COVID-19 pandemic began, the billionaire count had soared to 151. Uh, some standout characters on said list... Alfie Best remains on track to achieve his long-held ambition of becoming Britain's first Romany gypsy billionaire. His wealth has climbed by £202 million to £947 million in a mere 12 months. Yet six weeks ago, the 54-year-old caravan park tycoon packed his bags and moved to, guess the tax haven, Monaco. Uh, his wild crest, Parks will remain based in the UK, but he will now spend most of his time in the sun-soaked, low-tax enclave beside the Mediterranean. His 90-foot super yacht is moored nearby, and he will soon take delivery of a 500 grand Rolls-Royce Spectre. But he's fizzing with frustration, according to the Times. Fizzing with frustration. Quote, Britain needs to wake up. We're losing wealth creators. Our tax system and business regulations are sterilising the few strong people who build economies. We need these people to start businesses and create jobs. Brexit was a golden opportunity to create a fast-growing, pro-entrepreneur environment. That chance has been completely squandered. I do love taking lessons in politics and the organisation of this country from people who are domiciled elsewhere, don't you? I love it. I love, I, love, I love being told about Brexit by these billionaires that offshore all of their money as if, as if they're entitled to an opinion. Uh, but he is not the only high roller. He is not the only high roller to be eyeing up a new address. It has to be said this again in The Times. Um, in recent weeks, the Nigerian-born telecoms entrepreneur Basim Haidar has formed a working party of 29 nomdoms. 29 non-doms, many of whom intend to quit the UK before September because of the punitive tax changes. Well, boo-hoo. I think it is uh, rather more revealing that you're not prepared to pay your taxes here, to be honest with you. What a selfish outlook. What a selfish way to live, not wanting to pay back to the country which created the conditions in which you flourish. Now, if you want to... Uh, if you want to walk into a bank, pull out a gun and rob it, you go to jail, right? For a very, very long time. 
What happens if you're the chief executive of a multi-billion dollar fossil fuel company? And 60 years ago, scientists came to you and said, the product you and your company are producing is going to destroy the planet. And you say, okay, we'd better deny the reality. We'd better start these front organizations to say that it's a debate. It's contested, but we're working on it. And the result is trillions of pounds of destruction, untold lives lost. Is that a criminal offence? You want to charge someone hundreds of, I don't know, let's take an American example. You want to charge someone hundreds of dollars, right, for life-saving insulin. Or actually you're in your board meeting, right, and you're discussing what, what price you're going to set for insulin to increase profits. You say we're going to raise the price of insulin this year. We need to boost profits. Is that criminal? Crime is not just committed by people who rob banks. Terrible crimes are committed by people in three-piece suits, distinguished gentlemen, people who donate to charities, upstanding citizens. What was it? Cle Clem Attlee had, had a line, didn't he, on, on charity versus taxation. I'll try and pull that up for you in the break. I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment. Are those people criminals? I, I mean, I need you to understand, right, that what wealth inequality is worsening in this country, that the middle class is shrinking, the working class is impoverished, and those at the top of society, those with power that own industry, own the media, uh, own the media that's supposed to scrutinise them, and in some cases own the politicians as well. It serves their interest to preserve the status quo. Should wealth of that scale exist? 03456060973. If you go out and start a business and you're successful and you make money, that's great. But as a society, when we have people in such desperate shape, and we'll talk about that more actually uh, in detail in the next hour when we talk about the economic programs of the different parties, do we need people making billions? You know, I'm not against innovation. I'm not against wealth creation. But I don't think it's that out there to suggest that there might or should possibly be a limit on the scale of wealth that we permit. So an illustrative example, you could say, we'll take 95% of your earnings in tax past a billion. So you're not a billionaire. You can be a 999 millionaire, but you'd have to work very, very hard to make it as a billionaire. You can own a dozen homes. I'll give you 12. You can't have 20. I'll give you 12. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. You might have to uh, knock that super yacht down. You might have to knock the super off the front of it. It might just be a yacht, I'm afraid. You know, there, there are more billionaires right now than any time in history. Maybe not necessarily in the UK, as you've just heard in the Sunday Times Rich List, but overall, there's a, there's a great deal of billionaires. And, I, and, and while we struggle with the cost of living crisis, and I think this fairly provokes the legitimate question of whether we should abolish billionaires. You know, how do you become a billionaire in our economic system? And, and to be fair, I don't think the billionaires themselves are the problem per se. It's the organisation of the economy, right? The system that permits and creates them. So what's a good way to make a billion? Monopoly. Monopoly is a pretty good way. Not the board game, obviously. You can't, you're not going to make a billion quid playing Monopoly. Uh, no, an actual Monopoly. You know, something like Jeff Bezos's Monopoly. You know, by the way, his net worth, $175 billion at the end of last year. His company, Amazon, is responsible for nearly 50% of all e-commerce transactions in America. That's 50% of all online sales conducted by all businesses. 50% of them, one company. And as a consumer, you've got very few alternatives. Nor do the suppliers, actually, who sell with Amazon. I mean, for the first 25 years of its, ex of its existence, uh, Amazon did not permit its suppliers to sell at lower prices anywhere else. How else could you make a billion? How else could you make a billion? Inside, how does insider trading sound? How does that sound? Is that interesting to you? Get yourself a hedge fund, a couple of billion pounds to invest. Get the inside track on a deal, some economic activity. Deploy your investment against the market with the privileged information that gives you a leg up. Wealth begets wealth, does it not? What's another, what's another way to, to, to grow or at least keep your cash? It's tax cuts, isn't it? Keep your cash rather than surrendering it to the nasty state to your smelly compatriots or more specifically your fellow countrymen. Start a super PAC, you know, back a low-tax Republican, which is a strategy, it has to be said, that's preferred by the Koch brothers in America. Um, it's estimated that Trump's, that the Trump's presidency, presidency's tax cuts saved each brother more than a billion dollars in tax. So there's, there's, there's a pretty handy way of keeping a billion quid. And my favourite of the lot, what's the easiest way to be a billionaire? Inherit it. 
I don't want to go too far down that road, actually, because I think there is a big question mark when it comes to inheritance tax in, in the context of the general election campaign that we are approaching. So I think we'll probably have that chat then. But suffice to say, I am, I'm, I am a great advocate, as is Warren Buffett, by the way, for any of you who know your, know your capitalists well, for a very strong uh, inheritance tax policy regime. Should billionaires exist? 